Hey there everybody, it's Marty here from Extreme Fitness and um, I wanted to take a minute to just go over basic squat mechanics. I have to tell you, um, Linda and I, we go to gyms outside of our own facility to work out during the day and watching people do squats or whatever it is that they're doing, it's horrific. It's the most abused exercise that we see and we literally just end up going like this most of the time wondering what in the world are people doing they just don't have a concept so I want to tell you what a squat is I want to try to show you exactly what you're supposed to be doing the cues you're looking for and give you the knowledge so that you have a good idea of what to do when you go in the gym and you're going to attempt to do squats because anything else that you do you can call it anything you want but you cannot call it a squat. It's just not. So, we're gonna start off on approaching the bar, the basic mechanics of a squat, the range of motion on a squat, all the proper body mechanics and positions, and then racking the bar. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is approaching the bar. When we talk about approaching the bar, there, there's a method to every piece of this. So. What you want to wind up doing is getting the bar on the proper place on your back so that the bar is loaded properly. And clearly, I'm not going to put any weights on this bar right now. Weights are not relevant. If you're putting four plates on a bar just because you want to see how little you can squat, you're making the biggest mistake of your life, right? My advice is going to be you try and do what I'm doing with 135 if you're a guy. Cut it way down, 75% back, and let's see what happens to your weights that you use. Bottom line is approaching the bar. These stripes that go across the hatched part of the bar, that's called knurling. You have one, two, three separate places where there's knurling on the bar. You really want to try and come up and get a hold of that second knurling, okay? Both arms. It's going to give you a nice wide grip it's going to allow you to come underneath the bar and find the top of your shoulder blades. There's a shell. This is no good. That's riding right on your cervical spine. It's going to destroy your neck. This is a low bar squat. It's not incorrect, but it's a different type of squat. Right now, we're just going to talk about high bar squat right on top of the shoulder blades. That's the shell you're looking for. You can see that right now, that bar has become a piece of my body. As soon as I stand up, the bar is moving immediately with me. So it's clear, and it's loaded, and it's safe. Then I'm gonna take one, two steps outside the rack, and now I'm in a position to do the squat proper. One, two steps, and I'm back in the rack. I'm not gonna drop my body forward to set it down, I'm gonna just do a small bend, which unfortunately is what most people are doing in the gym when they do their squats anyway, so you should probably be okay with this squat. But there's your release. Stepping out and through. As far as the mechanics go on a squat, we try and go through this quickly. Most people think they've got to squat through their legs. It's a leg exercise, you can't deny that. But it's more about the hips hips, the hips, and the thighs. That's what's creating power in the squat. Glutes, number one muscle in the squat. How does that happen? When we stand tall and we lean forward, you squeeze your glutes. As soon as you squeeze your glutes together, it throws your hips forward, right? Try it. If you stand loose and squeeze your glutes, your hips are going to push forward. That's an open hip. That's how you want to be at the top of a squat. As soon as you drop your hips back and down, now we've got a closed hip. And that's what we're looking to do in the squat, to go from a closed hip to an open hip. And if you watch the mechanic, as it's just in an air squat. If I drop my hips back and down, I'm closing my hip. I've not changed my posture. I'm in the same posture. Now, if I use my legs to get up, I'm gonna to wanna to drive backwards because I'm expanding my legs. But down in that stance of a squat, if I open my hips, push on my heels, drive my hips forward and open them, I use my hips 
to push through the squat. Glutes are tight at the top. I drove through my heels. Center of gravity never changed. That's the mechanic. That's why you've got to go at least to parallel. Anything less than parallel is not a squat. It's not a squat. Let me say that one more time. If you don't go to parallel, it's not a squat. Please get this through your head, folks. Boys, girls, everybody, it's not. Unless you've got an issue. You've got an issue with the knee, you've got an issue with the hip, you've got an issue with an ankle, you've got an issue with the lower back. Clearly, you're gonna have to rearrange your mechanics. Parallel squat. So, approach the bar. Grabbing onto the second knurling on each side. Stepping under the bar to find the load point. Shoulder blade shelf. So we can stand up. Bar is loaded, it's become a piece of my body. Two steps back. You want to take about a shoulder width stance with the bar. Toes slightly pointed to the outside. Gives you a strong base. Almost to the point where you want to slightly lift your toes up off the floor. Why do we do that? If my toes are off the floor, then my weight is going to be pushed onto my heels where it belongs. Now, I can concentrate on keeping posture, dropping my hip back, and down to at least parallel. If you can get lower, that's okay. But notice when I get up, I drive with my hips because I stood on my heels. Hips back, drop down, hit my mark, push through the heels, and open my hips to stand. One more time. Hips back. Drop down, close the hip, hit my mark, push on my heels, open the hip, and stand. One, two steps in. I do everybody else's squat, and the bar's back on the rack. There's no real set stance point. You can stand wider, you can stand more narrow. Everybody's got different mechanics and anatomy going on in the hip joint. So for me to stand at shoulder width with my toes slightly pointed to the outside and then lifting my toes slightly up off the floor, I'm able to create balance on my heels and drop effectively. Now another cue point, when we squat, approach the bar, properly load the bar, dive up. Now let's go over some missed techniques. Number one problem, I'll do this a little to the side. Looking down, your shoulders will follow your eyes 100% of the time. So if you're looking down, when you squat, you're gonna go down. Now look at my position. Where do you think all the shear stress is? All of it is in my lower back. I'm gonna have to upright my back in order to stand back up. But if I find a fixed point towards the ceiling and I keep my eyes trained on that spot, it's going to force the perfect posture. If your head is up, your shoulders will stay up. If your head is down, your shoulders are going to round. So try and find a high spot that you can keep trained on to maintain the proper alignment. Here's the next biggest mistake. If they manage to get down to parallel, they hinge. So they push through the hip, drop the shoulders, and worm their way back up. Generally, this is because there's too much weight. Their upper bodies are not strong enough to stabilize that weight. And the weight at the bottom pushes them forward and they end up driving through the lower back. When you come down through squat, the shoulders and the hips are connected. Boom. They move at the same time. They drop together. You get your spot and hold it drive through the heel, everything moves as one piece. About another, two other big mistakes on the squat. Number one, person manages to get good position, bars loaded in the proper place, but on the way down, watch my knees. My knees are in. Check that angle out. Boom. It's a huge amount of compensation with the quads trying to do the job of the glutes and the hip. 
So you have to have an idea of what you're doing. Now, I know I said you got to look up when you squat. Squat in front of a mirror will help you to keep track that your knees are not going beyond the toe. They're staying behind. If you look down, you should be able to see the tips of your shoes and your knees should be out over the edge, driving back up. The other problem happens at the foot. They don't have hip flexibility and weak glutes and on the way down, the heels lift because now they're driving into the balls of their foot and their quads to try to get connected. So, load the bar correctly. Hips back and down. Toes up so the weight stays on the heel. Knees stay behind the toe and the knees stay over the heels. Spine stays upright because I'm looking straight through. Find your spot, drive through the heel to connect to the glutes and open the hip to stand up. Now if you're a beginner, it's going to be helpful to have something underneath of you. Maybe you're using a bench or a small step or a medicine ball and you practice the mechanics. Practice, even if you're an experienced squatter, when you try to refine your techniques, you're going to find that you're going to generate more power and strength and you won't look like an idiot in the gym doing your six inch squats with five 45 pound plates on each side. Trust me, it's a nightmare. Your knees, your hips, your ankles, your lower back, the compression on your spine and your discs, it doesn't need to happen. If you can't get that bar to parallel, femur, parallel, level to the floor, if you can't get the weight there, it's destroying your body. You look like an idiot and it's not a squat. It's whatever you want to call it but it ain't a squat. Practice air squats, okay? If you set a medicine ball on the ground, you practice your setup. Shoulder width, toes slightly pointed, shoulders up, hips back, drop through the range of motion. If you can't hit it because something's changing, your heels are lifting, your knees are twisting, the winding up collapse, trying to find that base, then you've got to lift your mark. How do you lift this mark? This is how. Your gym may not have big fat rubber bumper plates like mine does, but they will have weight plates of some kind, obviously. 25 pounds, whatever they got. Drop your plate. Now the ball is higher and you work on mechanics. Heels down, shoulder width, toes up, hips back, shoulders up, and find your mark and practice that mechanic, okay? Try 50 of those for three sets, working on nothing but perfect form, full engagement of the proper musculature. See how that feels. The next week you come back to do legs, do it with just a barbell and experience that level of muscle contraction and fatigue. Then start from the ground up. If you can manage a perfect squat, perfect, all those cues, all those points made with 315 pounds on a barbell and nail your mark, you're going to have gigantic legs that are super powerful, that are going to press easier, safer, less pressure on your back, less pressure on your shoulders and your neck less issues at the knee, no issues at the ankle, and everybody in the gym is going to think you're a hero, man. They're going to watch what you do and they're going to duplicate it. Instead of doing the squat we all know, or I don't even know what that is. That's like a good morning squat, something in the middle. 